So hi everyone and welcome to this video on an example of a Stackelberg oligopoly and this will just be similar to our examples in the last video except that we maintain the Stackelberg assumptions that we discussed in the last video. So uh, we have a market demand function and a, mar and a cost function for each firm and uh, we're gonna you know solve problems akin to a Stackelberg equilibrium. So the first question asks, okay, find the Stackelberg equilibrium for Q1 and Q2. So that's essentially finding Q1 and Q2. So uh, what we need to first do is get uh, the ORF of the follower firm, right? Because we need that um, to feed in to our leader firm. So to do that, okay, we're going to use the FOC in a Carnot model, which is uh, MR2 is equal to MC2. So if you know, uh, if you remember a Carnot model, this was RFOC. So we're going to implore that to get the output reaction function. And this is essentially, if you recall, we're going to calculate for revenue first to get um, marginal revenue. So this is uh, 100 minus 0 0.01 Q1 minus 0 0.01 Q2 times uh, Q2, right? So this is 100 Q2 minus 0 0.01 Q1 Q2 minus 0 0.01 Q2 squared, right? And we have uh, cost, right? Two is equal to 40 Q2. If I get marginal revenue two, this is just equal to 100 minus 0 0.01 Q1, okay? Uh, minus 0 0.02 Q2, right? So that's going to be that. And I'm going to equate this to marginal cost, which is equal to 40. So if I equate that, that's going to be um, about 100 minus 0 0.01 Q1 minus 0 0.02 Q2 equal to 40. Then uh, I can do some uh, simplifications because I need to isolate this with respect to Q2. So this is 0 0.02 Q2. Then I get uh, 60 minus 0 0.01 Q1. I divide everything by 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And I can get the output reaction function, the RF of Q2 being equal to, so that 60 divided by 0 0.02, that's 3,000 minus uh, this one, 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.02, that's one half, right, Q1. So you notice that we get Q2, which is some function of Q1. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get firm one's residual demand curve. And we do that by obtaining, or uh, by substituting firm two's ORF to the demand curve faced by firm one. So if you recall the demand curve faced by firm one, that's just this one. So substitute uh, ORF. So we get um, that's going to be P is equal to 100 minus 0 0.01 Q1 minus 0 0.01 Q2. But we're going to substitute the ORF. So this is going to be 3000 minus 1 half Q1. And you can notice that we're going to have eventually a price, which is just some function of Q1, right? Which is what we said was the residual demand for firm one. And if we solve this one, this will be uh, equal to 70 minus 0 0.005 Q1. So this is the residual demand curve. Then what we get is we, we know that the FOC that we need to follow, the FOC that we need to follow is that MR1 should be equal to MC1. So this is uh, a price function that we have there. So to get R1, this is just um, 70 minus 0 0.005 Q1 uh, times uh, Q1, which would be equal to 70 Q1 minus 0 0.005 Q1 squared. Then to get marginal revenue, I just take the first order derivative of that with respect to Q1, that's 70 minus 0 0.01 Q1. And I get the same marginal cost, right? So marginal cost, that's also equal to 40. Then I equate the two. So 70 minus 0 0.01 Q1 equal to 40. 
I get Q1 star being equal to uh, 3,000. So if I simplify all of that, then if I plug in this 3,000 into the output reaction function, which is this one, so I'll plug it in here. So that's Q2 is equal to 3,000 minus 1 half times 3,000. I get Q2 star being equal to 1,500. So those are the Stackelberg equilibrium quantities. Okay. So next, we're going to find for the Stackelberg equilibrium price. And to do that, so since the two firms sell identical products, then at equilibrium, they sell at the same price. So this is obtained by just... Uh, plugging it into your market demand function. So that's Q is equal to one, uh, sorry, P is equal to 100 minus 0 0.01 Q. But you know that Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So that's just going to be Q1, which is 3000 plus Q2, which is 1.5. This is equal to uh, 4,500. Then substitute 100 minus 0 0.01 times 4,500 this one will be equal to 55. Therefore, the Stackelberg equilibrium price is equal to 55. Next, and our last question, find the total profit. So for firm one, for firm one, that's just profit. That's equal to revenue one minus cost one. So we just plug in, right? So that's 55 times, uh, uh, we're just gonna use what we've had before, right? Uh, that's 55 times uh, the price, times the quantity, that's 3,000 minus uh, 40, okay, 40 times uh, 3,000, right? So this is uh, the marginal cost. This one is the price. Then you multiply it by Q. You multiply it by Q, no fixed cost, and you get 45,000. Then if you get the one for firm two, the profit uh, two is just R2 minus C2. So that's 55 times 1,500 minus 40 times 1,500, you get 22,500, right? So notice, obviously, since firm one is the leader, this is the leader's profit, which is far higher. And this is the follower's profit, which is uh, far lower. And if you compare that to a Carnot case, or if you remember from the example on Carnot, so example on Carnot, if you recall that video, I'll have it linked in the description box below, uh, Cor uh, Carnot, right? That's Q1 star is equal to 2,000, and Q2 star is equal to 2,000, with P star being equal to 60. If you solve for firm one's, uh, for firm one's profit in that case, so profit one, that's R1 minus C1, this is again 50, uh, sorry, this is going to be uh, 60 times 2,000 minus uh, 40 times 2,000, right? Because since the price is now 60, not 55, the marginal cost remains at 40. This is 40,000. And the same case is true for firm 2, which is also 40,000 since they have exactly the same quantity. And we note that since the leader firm one has a first mover advantage, right? Because it's the leader firm, its profit is greater. So 45,000, so for firm one, 45,000 is greater than 40,000, right? So this is Stackelberg, this is Carnot for firm one, right? For firm one. But for firm two, okay, for firm two, in Stackelberg, its profit is only 22,500, but um, its Carnot is 40,000, right? And uh, it's, it seems better for firm two to operate in this uh, Carnot, just a pure Carnot model in which uh, they announce their output simultaneously, uh, in which there's no information asymmetry. So I hope you were able to see the differences between Stackelberg and Carnot in this very simple example. And in the next video, we're going to move on with our cases of uh, differentiated products for Bertrand and Carnot. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you for your attention.